Merry Christmas. It has been quite a long time since I do the literature review and put it on the YouTube. And I recently noticed that there are some guys who are interested in the literature review video and they discuss with me about the literature which which made me feel very grateful to them. So I I want to continue the literature review on YouTube and I'm looking forward to discussing with you guys about the literature and I hope we can make progress together. And today the paper I want to uh, do the literature review is TGCN, a Temporal Graph Convolutional Neural Network for Traffic Prediction. Another deep learning model for traffic prediction, this is a very uh, a straightforward paper and it, it really makes sense in the domain of traffic. So let's begin our literature review. The presentation will be divided into three parts. The first part is motivation, and then we will come to the methodology, and finally is the experimental study. At first, the motivation is that the paper wants to capture the spatial and temporal dependence simultaneously for prediction. And for temporal dependence, as you can see, there is a traffic volume varies according to the time. You can see there is some uh, explicit periodicity. This is a period. You can see that the traffic volume peak appears every, uh, every couple of days. And also, we can see that there is a trend in the traffic value in the road, and there is a tendency, change, and, and the tendency, tendency change within one day. So, there is a strong temporal dependency in the traffic domain. And then, here is the spatial dependence. There is also a traffic value uh, in, the time, in, the time, in the time period, and they consider the uh, specific road segment, which is divided into three parts, the downstream, midstream, and upstream. Intuitively, we can see that the traffic flow comes from upstream and moves forward to the downstream. And from, from this figure, we can see that at first, the similarity appears between upstream and midstream. As you can see, they are very close because the traffic flow is coming from up, upstream to the mid midstream and then as the time goes by the similarity also appears between midstream and downstream which demonstrates that the traffic flow has coming from has come from midstream to downstream so there is a specific spatial dependence in the traffic domain so it there is a very these two dependence are very useful for traffic prediction as, as noted in this paper. And I want to establish a deep learning model to utilize these two dependence. That's the core of this paper. Now they also stated that they also stated that the limitation of the current uh, study about traffic prediction is that they not uh, explicitly consider spatial dependence just like the the traditional uh, AI MA model, time and filter model. In addition, uh, most of the work do not match the, com the context of network topology. For example, they usually, uh, on they usually only utilize the Euclidean data and they have not explicitly uh, leverage the top the, the top the, the topology and and you can also find a paper that directly use cnn to model the traffic in an image now let's come to the framework of the methodology and it is a very uh, traditional deep learning framework in with uh, lstm kind of with, with recurrent neural network kind of model and we can see that this they take the historical traffic information as input and obtain the final prediction. And the specific and the interesting thing is they use GCN to model the spatial feature and they 
uh, incorporate the GRU, a kind of recurrent neural network to model the temporal feature. That's, that is what they do to uh, implement, to utilize the spatial temporal dependence. Now let's come to the this, this two parts uh, respectively. The first is the spatial dependence modeling. Uh, and here is a figure of the uh, road network in, in abstract. You can see the, the node is the, is a, the node denotes as a road in a road network. And, and uh, the nodes are connected to each other if these two rows are connected to each other in top porridge. And the, the author tries to learn from the basic feature and learns from top project using the learning model to do the traffic prediction. As you can see, for this road, if it if it connects with other roads, there is a there's a link between the, between them, so their their traffic state will affect each other. And each road each, each road has their own uh, their just own feature, just like a traffic volume in certain period or the traffic speed in certain period in certain period. This these are regarded as the basic feature of this of this of this node. So based on this uh, um, modeling, we, we can see that the, the first part of the spatial dependence modeling is learning from basic feature. And, and specifically, feature corresponds to the node. So they have n nodes, which means n row segments, and each row segment will, uh, will uh, contain t feature, t, t, t feature dimension, which means that the, there is a vector of for each for each road, and this vector has t elements. And then they try to learn from topology. The most useful uh, methodology to let to mine the topology is that the adjacent matrix. Because with a adjacent matrix, you can clearly see which which rows are connected to each other and whether they can uh, whether the traffic flow can go from this from the certain row segment to to another row segment and this is the traditional deep learning uh, formulation you can see that h means that uh, it is, is means that the, there is a feature output of layer uh, l plus 1 this is the feature output of layer layer l this is the feature abstraction procedure and which means that uh, at layer one you have this feature and they, you input to the uh, neural network one layer of the neural network and you you get an output of next layer and the the the, sp the special part of this uh, of this formula is that they contain a weight uh, traditionally they have a weight matrix which is the neural network layer. The special part is that they have they consider the adjacent matrix. For each node, they accumulate of the feature of its neighbor neighbor node with the adjacent matrix. It's straightforward, right? If if the nodes are connected to each other, then their feature will be considered to uh, this, a, spe a specific node. And by using the adjacent matrix, there are two there are two specific problems. The one problem is that the di diagonal entries are zero. As you can as you can see that a, a traditional adjacent matrix, uh, the node is the if the no we do not consider the node uh, connected to itself. So the diagonal matrix are zero, which means that they they will probably uh, ignore this old feature. So in order to avoid this problem, we uh, the author uh, try to uh, add the adjacent matrix with uh, 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 entry matrix, uh, uh, one entry, uh, one entry, entry, entry matrix, which means that the diagonal entries are all one and uh, and the other elements are zero and they uh, come up with this uh, modified 
uh, adjacent metrics. What's more, the node with more neighbor nodes tends to occupy higher feature because there are there are many features there if the if the if a no row segment connected to each art connected to many rows then it means that many rows will have uh, uh the 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 adjacent the degree the in degree or out degree of this node will be very high but in fact there we we cannot we, we cannot consider the rows row segments with uh with much more connected rows X should, should be much high should, should be much higher because uh, because uh, intuitively if uh, if one row segment is connected to only one row segment this row segment will probably be influenced strongly by others because the the traffic flow is the traffic the influence of traffic flow has nothing to do with how many row segments are connected. It's only it's, it's only based on the traditional topology, so they do a normalization procedure which use the in degree matrix to normalize this uh this arranging matrix and they get a normalized adjacent matrix and that, that and this is how they model the dependence the spatial dependence. Then they come to the another part the temporal dependence dependence model. I think this part is really uh, traditional and it's really straightforward. Just a traditional recurrent new network with GRU cell and it, it specifically for GRU model, they have an update gate writer, which means that which means that we update each uh, each it we update the last state and to uh, to facilitate this this state. Uh, input and prediction and they have a reset gate vector to tell the to, to tell the new network to uh, ignore some of the information from last step and they incorporate this all uh, factors together to get the output of this state so this is the overall of tempo dependence modeling now the the model is very really simple right now let's come to the empirical study. They use two datasets. The first is a Syngen test dataset, which 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 consists of 156 major rows, ranging from 2015 January the first to 2015 January the 31st. The traffic speed is estimated in 15 minutes. Another dataset is the Los Angeles loop dataset which consists of 207 sensors and the date begins from 2012 to 2012 uh, first, uh, May the 1st and 2012 May the 31st and they, uh, they accumulate the speed, traffic speed in 5 minutes this mean, which means that they get a average minute in 5 minutes so let's, and then they uh, come up with Find metrics to, uh, in order to compare the model in a full view, and this is a very traditional method. Uh, MSE only is only for error. It is a, a good is a good metric for error comparison and MAE also and accuracy. And I think these two fact these two metrics are very new to me, and they and they can see that the the trend of the prediction and the real data will, will rather they are uh, rather they are close to each other. So the prediction performance is, is so in these figures. We can see that the proposed model uh, presents a very good result, and but we we can notice that the the their performance is close to the traditional GRU. Which which means that the temporal the temporal feature, it, it the temporal feature is really important. And once you have modeled the temporal feature, your prediction will be very you'll be very uh, satisfying. And also, as the traffic as the traffic prediction horizon uh, enlarges, the prediction will be much harder, as you can see. 
And then they also uh, implement a creative and uh, very useful study, which is about the perturbation analysis and robustness. Because in in traditional, because uh, usually the traffic data or any kind of data has some noise and which will affect the deep learning model. So they want to find if whether their model is whether their model is good enough to uh, avoid the noise and still and still present a robust prediction. As as you can see, they add Gaussian and Poisson noise to test the model. For each test, for each data set, the metrics change little, uh, no matter the what kind of uh, noise is added to the model, which means that which demonstrate that their model hex hex uh, is robust enough to uh, avoid uh, some noise to some extent. Then they try to integrate the model, and I think this part is quite poor because I, I don't think the deep learning model should be integrated in this way. They just pointed out that the, this model is uh, give a bad performance pre prediction performance in peak and they say that this is because the spatial feature smooths the change. I think this is the drawback of the model instead of the interpretation. To interpret a deep learning model, we should uh, point out what the feature in the hidden layer uh, presents instead of uh, 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 instead of uh, directly uh, explain the result. That's uh, in, that's my opinion. Welcome for the discussion, and thank you for watching. And I hope your discussion likes. Uh, and and I will see you soon in the last in the next video. Bye bye.